we begged for. All right, that's interesting. What Some of the biggest video game franchises were down and out at there some point. Because when you get to the top, you don't always stay there, but it makes you want it that much more when you lose it. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, Falcon. the 10 best comeback stories in video I'm games. Back. Starting off with number 10, id Software and Doom 2016. The 2000s right. were really a tough time for a lot of franchises out yeah. there. Technology was evolving and teams had to get a lot bigger, while the yeah. games industry was seeing a shift away from PC gaming. If you were making a major tentpole yeah. release, that game had... I remember when I was uh, a child in the 2000... Uh, early 2000... Uh, people still thought that if you're playing... That if you're playing... Uh, uh, well, there was a lot of hate towards PC gamers because there, people would have said, Oh, the PC games are the worst. You need to play on PlayStation or Xbox and console, only consoles. And they need to say, didn't like the PC gamers at all. And, and today it's a bit different. It's a lot different. They, there's more people that said, oh, let's play on PC. Uh, rather than on uh, the consoles. And I feel like it, it's really easy. You know, it's really easy. But we, we are lazy, so that's our problem. ...had better be ready to be ported over consoles, so compromises eventually had to be made. That was the world id Software was in when they started development on the original version of Doom 4, the game that would eventually yeah. become Doom 2016. After a divisive response to Doom 3 in 2004 and the failure of Rage in 2011, id kinda needed a hit, but at first it seemed like Doom 4 was taking the franchise the in the wrong direction. Fans I called it Call of Doom, and if you look at any of the gameplay footage that was floating around from that old build, it's not hard to see why. It just looked like a Call of Duty clone with some demons in it. Keep in mind, this was a time in the industry when Call of Duty was king, even more so than now, and the prevailing wisdom was that if you're making an FPS, it better be like COD or it's probably gonna crash and burn in the market. It was just following the trends at first, but in 2013 they decided to scrap the project, bring in Hugo Martin as creative director, and take the game in a more old school direction. The results, great. Uh, they speak for themselves. Doom was a series that was on its last legs, and the series was in danger of becoming irrelevant, but Doom 2016 made people stand up and pay attention. The intense shooting, the non-linear levels, and the minimum plot felt classic and somehow very I mean, modern Doom at the same time, and became the template for an entire FPS revival in the 2010s and beyond. Doom 2016 didn't just come out of nowhere, it was following the footsteps of big <laughs> retro revivals like Rise of the Triad, Shadow Warrior, and Wolfenstein The New Order, but this was Doom, probably one of the biggest game franchises of all time. So yeah. seeing it come back stronger than ever feels like it matters more, yeah. if that makes any sense. People were hyped. And number this. nine is Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. This yeah, is an interesting one because it could really easily be argued that there was no comeback for the Legend of Zelda series. Zelda is one of I Nintendo's most consistently that. popular franchises, and the games never, never really stopped Nintendo coming Nintendo out. Game, but you so could say know. that their relevance was kind of waning a little bit. Fans were experiencing some fatigue for sure, especially with 2011 Skyward Sword, a game that's so well and reviewed relatively well, but yeah, fans balk like at it. for a variety of reasons. Firstly, the gimmicky motion controls, the lack of oh, innovation, yeah. the linearity, and the constant tutorializing bugged a lot of people. And today the game is actually considered one of the lesser Zelda releases. They did, yeah. uh, I mean, a large amount to improve the game when the HD release came in 2021 like for the I've Switch, but the original the version really media, had its fair general, share of problems. Like it wasn't it. a terrible game, I'm not saying anything even close to that, but it just needed a new direction, and but that's I, what Breath yeah, of the Wild the was. The, the game people, is in many ways like a radical it. departure for the series, open world instead of linear, this, it took uh, the story one, however, in different uh, directions, there's less emphasis on dungeons, a more reactive world. It kind of so felt much. like a revelation when it came out in 2017, not just for the Zelda series, but the for the entire it. genre of open world games. And that's the thing, the series wasn't really go. at its lowest point. Like, we weren't really worried about Zelda, but the highs of Breath of the Wild were so high that it feels like a massive comeback, creatively speaking. And Nintendo's usually seen as a company that doesn't innovate a lot. Their games tend to stick to what works, but yeah, Breath of the Wild took true. some wild swings and pretty much hit it out of the park each time. 
At number eight is Resident Evil 7. It could be argued that the Resident Evil franchise has not had just one but two big comebacks. First in 2005 with Resident Evil 4 and second with 7 in 2017. But in my opinion, 7 was the bigger comeback for a few reasons. Leading up to the release of Resident Evil 7, the series was not in good shape. Resident Evil 6, I mean, it had its positive points, but it was kind of... Resident Evil 6 is something and no one talked about. I don't want to talk about Resident Evil 6. Uh, I haven't played the Resident Evil games as well because it's a horror game and I don't like these ones. But I've seen, I've seen it. I've seen them on YouTube. I've seen people talk about it. Uh, I've seen the part and people don't talk about Resident Evil 6. And for good reason. And for good reason. I mean, even Resident Evil 5, right? I even see threat no one talked about it no one talked about it but seven however seven is really really good uh i really enjoyed watching people play kind of a bloated disaster for capcom it, it flopped both in terms of sales and reviews and in that same year we got the lame at best operation raccoon city a western developed third person shooter that really didn't feel like a resident evil game kind of just a double whammy of bad crap so we got Revelations, and that game was pretty good, but those other two games really did a lot to damage people's perception of the series. The whole situation was so bad that for the first time, the series went multiple years without a new entry. Revelations 2 was definitely a step in the right direction, but it was pretty obviously a side project for Capcom, not the main event. Uh, 2016's Umbrella Core didn't do a lot to calm people's concerns about the future of the series either. And when it was first revealed, Seven had a lot of people worried as well. At first glance, it doesn't seem like it's anything like the classic games. Uh, for a lot of people, it looked like Capcom was trying to copy the recent horror trend of first-person psycho sneakers that kind of cribbed on PT like Outlast or Amnesia The Dark Descent. Thankfully, that was not the case. The game is actually very different in some ways from your standard Resident Evil, but there were a lot of classic elements that really satisfied long-term fans. And it's because of this game that the huge Resident Evil renaissance we're experiencing right now is still so, going on. The game was a gamble, but it really paid off. And number well, seven is... People play Resident Evil 7 on VR. I haven't seen that. I haven't watched people do that. Really interested. Really interested to see some, uh, you know reaction uh, react to that um maybe after this video i'll, I'll try to find people play uh resident evil 7 vr as metroid dread uh, it cannot be understated just how bad metroid other m was for the metroid yeah, franchise unlike it. a lot of other games on this list like breath of the wild or resident evil 7 some, it was a departure that just did yeah, not some, work some it was a swing and it was a miss in the 2000s the, there were consistent uh, releases it, of new metroid games they they feel they people felt like this game just you know, you know uh, ruined the franchise um but after Metroid Other M, there was just nothing. In 2016, we got Metroid Prime Federation Force, which is kind of weird side game thing that didn't really make fans think Metroid was ever going to make a real game in the series anymore. Uh, then things looked up in 2017 with Metroid Samus Returns, a 3DS game developed by Mercury Steam yeah, that was a remake of the 91 one. game, Metroid 2 Return of Samus. And there's probably an argument to be made that this was the real comeback, not Dread, but it was a 3DS game that was basically just a remake and it didn't feel like that big of a deal for that reason and most people just assumed that was kind of it for the franchise but in 2021 mercury steam yeah. came back with metroid no, dread a full-blown sequel to metroid fusion Sorry. only 19 years in the making and it blew people away samus returns was really yeah. well received when it came out but there were definitely some things to criticize about the gameplay of that one of uh, so a lot of people were kind of like eh metroid dread even as someone who generally does like mercury steam i was still caught by surprise by just how good metroid dread is it is a return to form for the series and and even if that's all we ever get for classic Metroid, it is an incredible comeback for the series that so many people had basically given up on. And number about Metroid, I haven't played uh, even hell. Sorry, about Metroid, I haven't heard of this game up until the last few years, uh, so I haven't played it. But uh, this is also not the type of game that I usually play. But it's really interesting to see how how it works. You know, I mean, there are all there are a lot of elements that you need to, as a player, uh, to look out, uh, to watch out from. 
and there are a lot of things a lot a lot a lot of things that you need to you know um focus on and learn uh the patterns and all that number six is xcom enemy unknown throughout most of the 2000s xcom was dead Not last game that came out was xcom enforcer in 2001 a third person shooter that really had nothing to do with the tactical strategy roots of the yeah, series uh there were a few canceled attempts at a revival that didn't get anywhere until 2006 when take two purchased the ip of xcom from atari in 2005. the game they eventually showed simply called xcom wasn't really well received by fans the game yep. looked nothing like the original games it was xcom in name only in hindsight the original the original version of the game that would eventually become the Bureau was actually pretty interesting looking, but yeah. I mean, it's really hard to take one game that had its own style, you know, doesn't matter whether it's uh, turn-based or a uh, strategy game or anything else, and it doesn't matter what you do. <coughs> Sorry, what? what? What was it? I don't I don't know what I'm, what I was talking about, but it doesn't matter which type of game. If you try, hey Trinity, how are you, my friend? How's it going? Welcome in. Um, I lurk to you in your streams a few times. I'm sorry I have I haven't said hello because uh, said hello because I'm I'm pretty much uh, busy and I don't have time to say hello in chat. But I was there. I've been uh, lurking almost every time I see you. Uh, streaming uh, I hope you're doing well I hope you're doing well how are you how are you today and by the way I'm doing reaction videos I decided to change a bit my um, my theme a bit instead of just gaming I will also do uh, I will I'll, I will also do reaction videos and this is a video by Gameranks um, 10 comebacks in the video games we begged for some reason i don't remember which number we are now so uh it's again okay i get uh i get to cut one of your stream again yes thank you so much for coming in uh, so i'm thinking that i will uh i'm thinking i'm thinking that i will uh come back for streaming i don't know how i will do that but i will do more reaction videos you know um i will i will edit them later uh put them on youtube uh, just like so many other uh, content creators, because I don't know, you know, I don't know. Maybe may, maybe we'll, people will enjoy. Well, maybe people will enjoy me uh, doing this stuff, and maybe I, uh, it will be easier for me to come back and speak English uh, correctly, um, like I did before. Well, at least like I did before. So yeah, uh, ten comebacks in video games we begged for. That's it. Yeah, it That's had it nothing to do with those original. Oh yeah, games. I wanted to say I wanted to say that a lot of game it doesn't make sense for a game franchise uh, to take let's say a strategy game or a turn based game and just do um, a game that not related in type. Now it's very rare that a game like that is actually succeeding, and I'm talking about Halo. Halo from the Halo franchise uh, had the halo wars which was a strategy game halo strategy game which was a huge success in the rts community um but it's really rare and when games like like metroids and xcom try to change it uh it's not always not always you know work um do i have another example Oh, oh there's there is the example of uh, Warcraft that was RTS and then World of Warcraft that became uh single player uh, not single player uh, 3D uh a third person game that was up until now a high huge success. So yeah, it's really rare, rare but most of the time when people try it uh, to change the style of the game even Halo didn't try to change the style of the game, by the way. Halo just did another game that is not related, um, but still the same name. The reason people were so angry at the time is in the mid 2000s, strategy was pretty much dead. Other than super yep. popular holdouts like Civilization, yeah. a lot of classic strategy games were just these. done. People wanted an actual new XCOM game and they were really yep. vocal about it. And while the FPS XCOM floundered in development and struggled finding a new direction, Jake Solomon worked on a game 
that would eventually become XCOM Enemy Unknown. It finally came out in 2012, and it was go. just they huge. Came back to this. It didn't just revitalize the aging XCOM right, franchise. They came it back arguably revived the entire genre. The will. funny thing is, the game we eventually... They do that... It's uh, for taking a risk in new uh, waters to grab new audience. Yes, I agree. And that's good. And that's good when you're talking about that. That's good. But you you can create another game, you know, a different story. Or just like Halo did, um, different, uh, different, and not just different style, different everything, you know, different... Uh, the different story, the different style, the different uh, gameplay, uh, everything different, and and different. If, if you can, if you can talk about like Halo, it might be even a different word. I haven't played a Halo War, so I don't know. But when you are taking the same word but doing something somewhere else, you can do that and change the style of the game, and people will take it just like that they wouldn't say oh it's just like what happened with my master chief you know so yes it, it happened you're right some people do that there's uh there is a very uh a good company i, I just heard of it yesterday uh they made subnautica subnautica the creator of subnautica is currently currently working they already announced the game i don't remember which one of this but they are currently working on a different type of game which unlike subnautica but completely different in everything and it is a turn-based game um and you're playing uh different pieces i mean you got different pieces just like a board game turn-based board game uh where you have characters and you can uh Paint them. They have uh, an an a type, a style, uh, and and they have a feature in the game that you can paint all those figuring, and it it looks pretty nice. It looks pretty interesting for people who like this kind of game. Uh, basically, keeping the core values of the franchise. Yes, yes. You know what you're saying is true because what happened with Halo, it's still the same word. Still, you're still playing Spartan a uh, universe, not word. Uh, still, still playing Spartans. You know, the, that's there is this, and and that's good because it's a familiar word, a familiar place, uh, familiar enemies, familiar a lot of things, a lot of familiar things, but a lot of changes, so that you can't really. Uh, you understand that there's a change you can't really say all right so this is a character and we're supposed to do the same thing that we need to do with that character uh the same and the same at the same way so yeah you right. got was pretty different from the original xcom still but that doesn't really matter because it was that good and number five is Prince of Persia, Sands of Time. One of yes. the hardest things a game series can do is transition yes. from 2D yeah. to 3D. Uh, certain games yeah. make it look easy, that but you remember, comeback. like, others that completely crashed and burned? Uh, do you remember oh, Earthworm? In this case, by the way, we talked about it a second ago. In this case, with Prince of Persia, they really did change a lot. But they changed everything. They changed the story, they, they changed the style, they changed the characters. Um, it's no longer a princess. The only thing that it didn't change, the main thing that it didn't change, uh, two main things, sorry, two main things that it didn't change is the antagonist and the, uh, this one, Jim, Jim the Worm. Uh, yes, it was for the uh, Nintendo 64, I think, and yes, maybe, yes. Uh, Nintendo 64, you can see it on the right. Um, yes, it was also, uh, people could play it on PC, by the way. Oh, I didn't, but I didn't know that it was by, made by Rockstar. Or sold by Rockstar. Interesting, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Uh, Prince of Persia, no, Prince of Persia was also for the PC. By the way, interesting thing, Prince of Persia, the, the first one, the, uh, the, the very first one, uh, is the first game ever to uh, war to have uh, limited time 
I mean, it's the first game ever to have a limited time. You had, if I remember correctly, two hours to finish it. Or the princess will die. And so what I want to say, the only thing that they that they uh, keep, kept in the Prince of Persia, the, the Sands of Time, the only thing that they kept was the, uh, the princess, not, not the princess, sorry, the antagonist, the, the vizier, and the idea that they're in, in a castle, in a castle. That's the only thing, everything else is changed. Oh, and there are a lot of fears. <laughs> there was a big gap of fears. Gem 64, I, mean, this is I do. Prince of Persia struggled more so than most, go. though. 1999's Prince of Persia, Prince 3D, Persia 3D was a disaster. So much so that Jordan oh, Mechner, the original creator of the series, sold it all to oh, Ubisoft and just stepped away from game development entirely. It seemed like the franchise was 100% dead, but 2003's Prince of Persia, Sands of Time, yeah. brought it back in and a now big it way. Like it's it's dead easy again. to forget, but back then, cinematic platformers were kind of Tomb Raider. They were a little stiff and a little awkward. Yeah, that but Prince of Persia yeah, that really was changed really that. Yeah, it managed to make running and jumping fun again in these games. Times. And Not combine four. that with time powers, they managed to make a game that's really unique and still fun to play today. Uh, yeah. The series revival lasted for a little today. while before uh, the developers I mean, transitioned over. Sorry that I'm, uh, that I'm pausing every second because I really enjoyed the Prince of Persia game. And the next big thing after the Prince of Persia in this style was uh, Assassin's Creed. Uh, where many people said, oh, you can walk on the walls just like in Prince of Persia. Well, the fact, the matter of fact, it, it, you can't. You can't, but you can do other things. For a new project called Assassin's Creed and the rest is history. It's easy to forget just how innovative oh, the Sands of Time Assassin's, Assassin's Creed, Creed and the rest nope. is history. It's oh, easy no. to forget just how innovative the Sands of Time was uh, because so many games owe a debt of gratitude for figuring out the mechanics that they figured out that are just standard now. Sadly, the series back yep. in the box right now. It's been over 10 years since there's been a new one. And at this point, it's yep. kind of hard to say whether or not it's going to come back. And it sucks that it's gone, but we got to show some respect to Sands of Time for bringing that series back for a yep. few years at least yeah and number f oh and by the way um <clears throat> uh they talk about all right so there is the prince of persia the sense of time then the uh two thrones no two thrones was the third one uh the forgotten sand no forgotten sand the fourth one uh the warrior within prince of persia sense of time warrior within uh two thrones and forgotten sand now, Forgotten Sand didn't uh, didn't work very well with the audience. I haven't played it, and I don't know if I will. But um, I didn't play it. But all the three that before were great, really great. Um, the fourth one, uh, Forgotten Sand, wasn't very good. And then they had uh, Prince of Persia Four. Now, let me just reiterate what I said. It was Two Thrones, Prince of Persia Four, and then Forgotten Time. Uh, forgotten sands so the Prince of Persia, Persia 4 was really unique was different had they changed it they changed this as it was different it was good in terms of combat very different style and it was really really fun the only problem with it was the story and I'm I, and I think I personally think that the story was okay but a lot, that was the main complaint about this game that the story was uh, the game lack story i mean there was there was something missing and and the reason for it by the way ubisoft admitted it that they were focusing more the experience the gameplay and less on the story uh, so that pretty pretty much messed it up you know pretty much a reboot of the original would be great with Assassin's Creed. Uh, first one, yes. Um, yes, I agree. I agree. Um, the, the reboot reboot of Assassin's Creed, uh, reboot for Assassin's Creed One, would be amazing. But there is, you know, there are a lot of debate about Assassin's Creed in general, not not where they are now, but. Um, you know, in inside games, all kind, all kind of debates. But with Assassin's Creed One, there's the, the one part that says uh, the original was very good. It, we have great memories from the very one for the first one. 
And if we know now make a remake, so more like most likely a re remake in terms of graphics, and I don't think that it really need that. And if not in terms of graphics, what are you gonna do it? Because I can't, I can't play Assassin's Creed, the first Assassin's Creed, and compare it to the last ones in terms of gameplay. I don't know why. I mean, it's nostalgic. It 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 lies where it stands. You know, I don't, I wouldn't enjoy that this, that same. Uh, it, it, I wouldn't enjoy that game in the same way if they will do it similar to the games that they have now. Even if the story is awesome, my opinion. Uh, it felt rushed when they're talking about the uh, Assassin's Creed Four. Eh, no Assassin's Creed. Uh, Prince of Persia Four. Uh, maybe, maybe I don't remember. I don't remember that it felt rushed to me. But maybe, maybe you, you might be right. Four's Mortal Kombat 9, Mortal back in 2010, Kombat uh, Mortal Kombat was just dead. It was probably one of the biggest fighting game franchises of all time. And it just seemed like it was done after 2008's just pathetic Mortal Kombat versus the DC I don't Universe. A crossover game that really just nobody asked for. It was a Mortal Kombat game with a teen rating. Enough said. I remember um, it's Armageddon. one of those games that seems Armageddon like it's a franchise's last Mortal desperate Kombat. attempt at relevance uh, because it basically was. The series had pretty much taken a beating over the last decade. The Xbox era games in the series like Deadly Alliance, Deception, and Armageddon were just too drastic of departure from the original series and they just weren't as good as far as fighting games go armageddon especially was pretty lame uh so this nope. was a series that really had a multi-year losing well, streak at this armageddon had the problem with the story with the, with the with a lot of things but i did i really enjoyed our armageddon i don't care what they say i enjoyed armageddon uh, yeah, Mortal Kombat 4 was the first one to 3d models yeah up until 4 they had the uh real-life pictures, images. This point. So, when Get Mortal Kombat, uh, or Mortal Kombat 9, as By the it way, is now known, came out in 2011, it was a huge breath of, of fresh air. It was Kombat, a 2D fighter, uh, characters, like the classic games. Bars. It it's eliminated a, a lot of the dumber Baraka. mechanics the recent games had added in favor um, of a back-to-basics approach, correct, and Baraka. added a few modern fighting game Baraka. ideas Baraka. to it. The story mode, also absolutely huge. Baraka, yeah, MK Baraka. versus DC had a story mode, but the one in this game was just so good. Good. They're just so well produced, very entertaining. So much yeah, so that it became the model for basically oh, every other that. fighting game story <laughs> mode that followed it. It's not a perfect game by any stretch, like 10 and 11 are straight up better designed fighting games. But this is the game that brought the series back and sort of established the yeah, norms that we see today. And yeah, that. I don't know how game. you don't praise that on a game list out. like this. And number three is Devil May Cry 5. For years, Devil May Cry was just... All right, so Devil May Cry. Let's let's talk about Devil May Cry. I haven't played this game. Um, in general, I haven't played this game. I have I only played um, Devil May Cry three when I had the PlayStation two, and I got stuck there. I think it was the first boss, three headed dog. It was really hard for me, and I was very frustrated. So I didn't. So. I mean, uh, I was really frustrated because I couldn't defeat it, but I didn't rage quit at that time. I just tried again and again and again, and I needed to turn off my P my, my PS2. But after after that, I didn't want to come back to the game. <laughs> so, well, why? Why? Why should I? Why? Because uh, why? I, I will play this game, I will try again and again, I will lose again and again, it will frustrate, frustrate, frustrate me again and again, so why should I come back to that? So, I didn't want to, but today, today is a different, I'm a different kind of person today, if I, if I can't make it, I will try a hundred times. Uh, Devil May Cry 2 was horrible. I don't know. Another dead series. 2008's Devil May Cry 4 was a bit of a letdown too. compared I've to 3. About the and the reboot ones. DMC, well, I don't want to take the dump on it that a lot of people have. It's an interesting game. It's not the same thing, though. I think it's a very different game. And a lot of people saw it as kind of an insult. So after that, there was just nothing. 
Most of the time, after the begotten Western reboot of a Japanese franchise, that's that's the end of it. It happened to Bionic Commando, having a lost planet, and a lot of people thought that was just going to be the Devil May Cry fate as well. The dream was dead, at least until the surprise reveal in E3 2018. Devil May Cry was finally back. There was some uh, concern over hey, Crypt man, Keeper Dante, name? but uh, that quickly passed going, when going, people dude? actually Hope got their hands doing. on the game. The I graphics, the gameplay, so and the music, it's all best in class. True return to form. You almost never see a series just come back as strong to either. To Especially games. as a sequel that just straight up ignores Videos. the reboot. As someone who actually really doesn't hate what they did with DMC, I'm still grateful we got the proper sequel uh, to close out the story of Dante. Right. Hey, if you're here, look at this photo. Look at this monster. Do that. Create that in, on Zender. If it does end up being Here's the last game in the series, it's a hell of a high note to go out on. As an amazing comeback for a series that most people assumed was 100% dead. But I also have to say, I that have the, the feeling the way, that DMC Devil May is Cry not five. done. And number two is Streets of Rage 4. Oh, no, this entry is less game. of a comeback for the series and more of a comeback for a whole genre. I have no Beat em ups were is. huge in the arcade days and eventually just started to die out. And once the scene wow. died out, it really it died really out. Good. There are a few small indie beat em ups that came out from time to time, but there's just nothing Man, that can. I'm saying that it looks really good because I remember those games uh, Street Fighter, you know, Golden Axe, and I mean. These kind of type, those type of games, and it looks really good, really uh, full of characters, full of uh, in, uh, information that you can, you know, consume by just watching the game. Compared to the greatness of Final Fight, Turtles yeah, in Time, or Streets of Rage, that is until this game came out, uh, released a whopping 26 so years so after the third game. Streets here. of Rage 4 is a return to form, not just for the classic series, but the entire genre. Utilizing a few modern ideas and incorporating a few fighting game-like features, Streets of Rage 4 is really a masterclass good. in modernizing an old genre for the modern day. It keeps everything yeah. people love about beat 'em ups: the simple I controls, agree. the amazing art, the music, while adding enough depth to keep it interesting for hardcore players. It's just an all-around really fun game that's surprisingly well made. The Streets of Rage games never really got bad, like 3 still holds up, I think, but the massive gap in between time and just how dead the genre itself was, and then how good Streets of Rage 4 actually really is, it, it, we have to talk about it here. And finally... All right, so it, it's... Uh, I see that kind of games, and I remember the last one that I played this type of game, uh, beat 'em up is uh, an odd case that you would think would last while while did you play together online for or flying? Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. But but when I see these type of games, I remember the last one that I played them, and it was in the inside the Yakuza game. I don't remember uh, which Yakuza game. I think it was five five. I think four that i played uh you can go there to an arcade uh and play a saga game i don't remember which game it was uh oh no it's it wasn't that type of game sorry it wasn't that that type of game it was um it was um you know fighters uh type of game like tekken and and uh, Mozart Combat and all that. And it was frustrating. I hated it because it was so hard at some point. No pun intended. At number one is Final Maybe Fantasy XIV. No, like it really what could X. be at number one other than this? Back in 2010, Final, Final Fantasy XIV uh, was basically just a huge 14? disaster for Square Enix. <clears throat> Back in Visual Fighter, yeah. Are we talking about Final Fantasy XV? Fantasy XIV. Right. Like so let, before we continue this one, just want to let you know that... Uh, I'll give you an exam uh, uh, a nice fun fact. Uh, they planned. Uh, I want to make sure that I'm right about Final Fantasy 15 and not 14. So just a second. Final Fantasy. Because I wrote it, wrote it to myself. Because that's what I do. Um, oh, 14. So maybe it's 15. Let's see. Yes. Final Fantasy 15. I made, sorry, I made a TikTok video about it. Um, it's a Final Fantasy 14 Reborn. So Final Fantasy 15, uh, originally been, uh, Hideo Kojima, the creator, um, planned, well, is one of his first ideas was to make this game, uh, like a musical. 
and he's a crazy he is a crazy dude he got a lot of great uh you know ideas he wanted final fantasy 15 to be a musical but people in the team um you know told him that it was a bad, bad idea and eventually convinced him to not make it a musical game now it's interesting because i've never seen a musical game so i, I wonder how 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 would he've done that you know how, how can you make a final fantasy game into a musical uh, but unfortunately it didn't turn out and and maybe not unfortunately you know maybe maybe it was a good thing <laughs> Um, I haven't played the Final Fantasy games, and uh, I apologize. Like, really, what could be at number one other than this? Back in 2010, Final Fantasy XIV was basically just a huge disaster for Square Enix. Many considered it one of the worst MMOs ever, a black mark on the Final Fantasy name, and like a boondoggle that almost dragged down the entire company with it. It, it cannot uh, be overstated just how bad things were for Final Fantasy XIV when it first came out. It's almost impossible to imagine now, considering how massive... That's crazy. That's crazy. I mean, these guys are crazy. These guys are crazy. But uh, no, it was maybe. Whoa, I said Hideo Kojima. I'm wrong. I'm wrong. I'm wrong. I don't remember the name, but it's not Hideo Kojima. Hideo Kojima created the uh, Metal Gear Solid. So yeah, maybe I don't remember the name. Sorry. Uh, who was all right? You know, I, I'm curious now. Who is the creator? Um, Tetsuya Nemura. Tetsuya Nemura. Yeah. The original director of Final Fantasy XV. Yeah. Sorry. I said the wrong word. Just simply the popular name. the game is now. But at the time, many really assumed that it was a failure. And the very idea that an MMO could somehow turn itself around after such I mean, a massive negative reception seemed impossible. Like, it's something that just everyone. doesn't happen. Like, that's it's crazy. probably one of the few that's it's ever happened to. I can't think of another one off the top of my head. The obvious thing to do here would just be abandon it and try something new. But Square Enix had apparently way more riding on this game than any of us knew. It wasn't just any old game, it was Final Fantasy. And if it failed, it could potentially damage the reputation of the entire series. That's when Naoki Yoshida was brought in, uh, who, in somehow less than three years, managed to turn an unfinished mess into the Realm Reborn, basically an entirely I new game built from the skeleton play, of the right? original. It took less than half the time it took them to make Final Fantasy XIV, and he managed to make an entirely new game that was, I mean, calling it a better product is a massive understatement. And it was a huge gamble, too. Final Fantasy XIV is so big that it managed to dethrone the mighty world of Warcraft, and it still has the highest active player base of any MMO out there. And that's a turnaround that, like I said, it remains an anomaly. I genuinely can't think of a Another MMO that has had that happen, especially on this scale. There's yeah. plenty of comeback stories for game franchises out there, but for this single game, uh, that almost never happens. And that's all for today. Leave us a comment, that's let us know what you think. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, right, so now's a great time to do like so. We upload brand new. Uh, I liked it, by the way. What's going on? I know I'll leave a like here. I put it in the chat because, you know, uh, I do support this uh, channel. Uh, they are awesome.